Hi, this is Dr. Libby Kim Karen, and we're back for another Tame Your Brain Part 9. I'm going to have to stop saying part soon because I know some people are getting stressed that they're either like missing bits or they need to watch them all in sequence. You don't, all of these are like standalone, and feel free to dip in and out as well. Um, welcome to the people that are watching tonight that I know have said they will be watching. I think we've got the Hancock family coming along tonight, and I think we've got um, the Smiths, my friend Lizzie, coming along tonight. So hopefully we'll be able to say hi individually to the kittens and you can tell me which one's your favourite. So we've got some more eyes appearing this week and so we're going to start with a little check up on where we're at. So Evie, would you like to get on board with the kitten grabbing? And we're going to start there today. So quick, quick, we've started, we've fed mummy already. Oh look, we've got two eyes there. Hello baby. So we think that one is a little girl and then this one. Hi, Squeaky. This one's a little boy. Yeah, not, yet. <laughs> not yet. And then... This is Pingu, the other little girl. Let's see. She's still not, no. no. Gosh. And they all take different times and just like our babies, you know, when it's the right time for them, it just sort of happens. This, have we got a little peep? One? We've got yep. a peep. We've got one eye, half an eye. This is good news. So that's a little boy, we believe. And then the last one should be a little smudge. Anything? Yep. Little peep. A tiny peep on that side. Have we got anything on the other side? Yeah, I think we have. Yeah. Oh, how cute. We're getting there, look. Okay. So guys, this is where it gets exciting and this is where the kitten watch becomes a little bit more than them just lounging around in a box. They actually start moving after this. So they're all now activated because we just touch them, how dare we. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is, uh, tell me honestly, are you feeling a little bit stuck as we come out of this week? Have you just reached a little bit of a threshold where maybe this has gone on long enough for you to have exhausted the joy part and maybe hit a bit of a wall? Maybe you found something to energise yourself with. Maybe you found something that's a way of contributing that makes you feel better. And we're going to come on to contribution as our final human need on Monday. But it's the same for a lot of us. We've survived that alarm phase where we were all triggered by this threat into survival mode. And then our adrenal cortex enlarged to cope with this increased level of stress hormone whizzing around our body. And it actually felt okay. And the resistance phase was almost comfortable because that second part, we could we, suddenly we could cope with all these extra hormones because the size of our adrenal cortex enlarged to do that. And we even got a bit creative because as those hormones weren't in our bloodstream and they were being received, it allowed that part of our brain to function suddenly. Um, but then, as the cortex shrinks back a bit as the alarm phase and resistance phase wears off, we might start to feel a bit rubbish again because we're getting tired because of all this overdose of hormone and that's when we start to hit the wall a bit and there was a global survey done it was the leadership and well-being survey and it was on the, the what dimensions do we need to both work well and live well and guess what corona is hitting us slap bang between the eyes in all six of the dimensions they're identified just like it's hitting us in all of the six human needs that I've been talking about throughout this series so Yesterday I talked about growth, and it seems a long time ago now, but do you remember those goals that maybe you set yourself when you accepted that we were in lockdown? Do you remember all of that optimism and the keen buying of materials? <laughs> I myself am still in possession of various lovely, darling, middle-class craft projects for my girls. Well, I'm happy to report we've used precisely one kilogram of the 12 kilograms of clay that I bought, one meter of the 14 meters of felt in various beautiful colors that I bought, and the five liter tin Dulux Brooklyn Knights 5 paint that I bought to redecorate my hall is still sat pristine and unopened in my still as yet undecorated hallway. So if you are sitting there maybe beginning to beat yourself up a little bit because all you feel you've achieved so far is maybe an increased waistline and a borderline alcohol problem, that's okay. If you're feeling a little bit rubbish because you feel somehow you're wasting this time, that's okay too. And here's the thing, if you think about your must for your family that we started talking about yesterday, 
if you think about not should, but what must you come out of this with, you'll probably find it similar to uh, lovely Laura who said yesterday on the page, do you know what, my family safety is my must. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? All the other things are shoulds. And as they say, you can should all over yourself, but it doesn't actually do any good. There's a big difference. If you have a goal, here comes Mama. If you have a goal, it must fit the criteria of right goals. And I'll go through those on Monday. Not um, smart goals, which are very business speak, very management consultancy. Right goals are a bit more mind, body, soul purpose in a way that really resonates. And so here we are, not in the shape we thought we'd be in, not as advanced as we thought we would be. So what do we do? Well, the answer lies in what happens with us losing this growth human need that we talked about yesterday. And again, it's a need, it's not, it's a need, not a want. It's not a, 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 an ideal, it's not a, in good times, it's a we need it. We have to feel we're growing or we're dying. And there's a temptation to listen to something like this or buy another self-help book, but do nothing with it. And we all do it, and when self-help becomes shelf help, right? And it just sits there on your shelf. How does it go in? It doesn't go in by osmosis. You have to do something. So as ever, let's get active. I'm going to give you a little bit of homework for today. So just cast around in your brain and think about one tiny thing, a kitten-sized goal, not a big five litre tin of Dulux sized goal, but a little thing. And something that you want to make a must, something that would make you feel good and is good for you. So this is what we call a class two human need. The doing of it may not feel good, but the doing of it will be good for you, be good for the world, advance your cause in life. So that's, that's a little thing to do. It might be a shelf to clear, it might be a box to empty, but make it something really superbly achievable that will take a maximum of 45 minutes of your time. Because when we don't achieve growth, when we don't achieve progress, it hits us in the feels and it makes us feel a bit bad. And sometimes we want to take that pain away by going into sedation behaviours. These are our maladaptive coping strategies we talked about yesterday. And we pick things like Netflix binging, alcohol swilling, whatever it is for you. Um, to, to stop us having the pain of failing at something. We just have to pick the right goal. So here's the thing. The goals you initially set were based on that overexcited, stimulated phase of your brain biochemistry being a bit nuts at the time. And it's changed now, so we have to adapt. So this is a gentle reminder. We're all still kitten-shaped in learning how to cope with this brave new world. None of us have got data stored in how to navigate this. We've got two sides of our brain, our Einstein brain, our left prefrontal cortex, which comes up with creative solutions, and our right frontal cortex, which references what's been experienced by us already. None of us have got anything in that data bank. So, again, as I say every day, I'm not here to sell you anything. I started this kitten series to give my mummy mate something to focus on that's positive every day. If you've only just joined us and you'd like to see the other videos, head on to chemcaron.com. All the other parts of Tame Your Brain are on there. It'll take you to my YouTube channel. Hello, Mama. But you don't have to. These are all just in order to be helpful. We've now had 3,000 views, so we're officially viral. <laughs> Not just coronaviral. And I'm going to be posting off the... Um, radio interview I did yesterday because we've been picked up by BBC Radio Suffolk um, because of this activity and so I'm going to have a day off tomorrow and then I'll be coming back on Monday and what we'll cover will be the next phase of this which is where do we go with all of these human needs, what do we do to mesh them all together, how do they interact to help us actually navigate this next patch which is coming which is all about as humans what's the next phase for our society it's a brave new world that's coming we're all switching to different things that we've never had to do before like zoom meetings hands up who's a bit zoomed out now how many screens have you been on this week i know i've done hours and hours so i hope you're all doing as well as you can in these crazy times and stay well and i'll see you back here on monday <laughs>